Hello, Jody in here and um, coming to you today to give you some coronavirus tips. I created a coronavirus protocol that I circulated on social media, but uh, for some reason my social media account is censored and I don't think many people have seen that protocol, so I'm making this video hopefully so that I can reach more people because I do believe that the tips in my protocol are highly effective, evidence-based uh, uh, methods that can help a lot of people during this very difficult time, not only to fight the virus, but also to prevent it. And my little puppies <laughs> down on the floor saying hi. It is a protocol that covers three critical aspects of fighting the virus. I'm sorry if you see me looking down, that's because I'm either looking at uh, research or I'm looking at my protocol on my iPad. So three categories. We're disarming the virus. We're boosting our immune system. We um, are gonna start out first by talking about this particular virus and what it is. It is a coronavirus. A coronavirus is a large group of viruses that cause disease in both animals and humans. We as humans have four different subtypes that are in circulation. Uh, this is gonna be the fifth and major one. It is the, the, the same uh, virus uh, that is responsible for uh, yeah, SARS, SARS, you remember SARS, the SARS outbreak? Yes. It is actually called SARS-CoV-2. The SARS outbreak that we know about is called SARS-CoV. So this is SARS-CoV-2. So it's kind of like it's SARS, but I guess because they don't want people to be, um, worded out by the name SARS. They just call it COVID-19. COVID-19. Uh, the other coronaviruses cause a common cold, which just have very mild symptoms. But as we know, SARS, it, no joke. And this is a SARS virus. I just want you to clarify that. Okay, so SARS is, is, not, is not a virus to play with. Characteristics of the COVID-19 uh, virus is that it is an enveloped RNA virus. So we have naked uh, viruses and we also have enveloped viruses. This virus is enveloped. And why this may be of importance is what we're gonna talk about right now is my uh, first tip in my protocol. I uh, suggested the use of oregano oil to steam the mirrors and this is twofold we're doing two things here and we're gonna talk about the first thing which is disinfecting the mirrors and I recommended oregano oil as well as GSC which is grapefruit seed extract there is also grape seed extract uh, that is also efficacious. Both of them have eff efficacies in uh, being uh, virucidals and uh, bactericidals. Okay, so the first one is the oregano oil. The active ingredient is called carbacrol. Carbacrol. Say that six times fast. Carbacrol, 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 okay. Carbacrol, <laughs> all right. And in uh, studies, it's been shown to be highly infectious, efficacious in um, uh, killing enveloped viruses. Enveloped viruses in one study, they uh, looked at eight viruses, five were enveloped, three were naked and uh, all the enveloped vi viruses showed susceptibility to carbacrol, <laughs> okay? And there's another study that I saw that 
uh, showed a high uh, bactericide virucidal uh, effect for noroviruses, which is a naked uh, virus, which causes like uh, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, and stuff like that. So it it shows a broad spectrum uh, virucidal activity, but it seems to love envelope viruses and this is an envelope virus though we do not have specific information about its in interaction uh with the COVID 19 uh we can uh deduce a lot of this stuff when you have new stuff coming up is by deductive reasoning we can deduce then that if it's highly efficacious at killing envelope viruses then more than likely it will probably show uh, uh, good results with the other envelope viruses as well, okay? Uh, GSC, grapefruit seed extract, is also shown to have viricidal effects. And it's been shown to be really efficacious at, at killing avian influenza viruses as the viruses in birds and in other uh, animal viruses, they haven't really studied any that any viruses that uh, affect humans with this particular uh, uh, a proposed viricidal. And it also is shown to have bactericidal effects as well, uh, even on woven woven clothes like this. Uh, so get you some GSC, make a solution and spray your clothes. <laughs> it won't bleach it or anything. And it, it, it's been shown in studies. So everything I refer here are peer reviewed studies and I will at the end show all my uh, references. And number one, the direction is to put one to two drops of oregano oil or GSC in a nasal steamer and uh, their nasal, nasal steamers are uh, found all over. Maybe they're none left right now, I don't know. But the last time I saw one at CVS for $44 and uh, basically just heats up, creates a warm steam that you breathe in. It, it warms up your uh, sinuses and uh, your nares, okay? And also, if you can't get that, a good old steam bath, a homemade steam bath works just as well. I'm pretty sure you know how to make a homemade steam bath. You just use a large bowl, hot steaming water, a towel over your head, and you inhale that steam. Um, and I said to steam the sinuses for 10 to 20 minutes, uh, with durations between three to six uh, times a day, depending on the severity if the person is infected, or I would say three times a day if you're just doing prophylaxis, okay? Um, I highly recommend this for individuals who are in a high, an area that is uh, highly uh, infected with the virus like New York, uh, yeah, New York and the cities like Chicago, uh, which where actually is where I'm kind of located right now. <laughs> um, so why am I telling you to use a steamer? By now you probably have seen one of those uh, videos going around with this person explaining uh, some of the weaknesses of the virus and uh, that it actually doesn't do too well in 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 warmer, uh, high humid environments, and so that is the method to my madness. The uh, behind telling you to steam the nares. I do have peer reviewed, and as a scientist, I must have peer reviewed. <laughs> data to share with you. So I'm not, this is not just some quackery information and um, I wish more physicians would actually um, utilize meta-analysis in their, in, in their practice, evidence-based medicine uh, and uh, peer-reviewed uh, research, which is what I 
just all the stuff I'll be talking to you about. So stay brace yourselves. <laughs> well, why am I telling you to steam your nears? So steaming your, your nears has two functions. We're heating and we're disinfecting. Okay? Which um, are two ways to disarm. Okay, so this, this, um, this this one um information that i'm reading to you is based on a study uh done uh shortly after the sars outbreak so the first sars outbreak this is the second sars outbreak it's a different type of SARS virus but it's SARS. okay um so this is information about the first sars virus this sars virus is a little different than the first SARS virus, but it is still in the same family and it's very similar. So that's why it's called SARS. Okay, so the main route of transmission of the SARS-CoV virus back then uh, was presumed to be respiratory droplets. That's why the mask is really important. Okay, when you go out, wear your mask. I don't have one, I should get a mask. I will do after, after this research that I did. Okay, so why is it important to uh, steam the nearest? So basically, we want to stop this virus from entering into our nearest and attaching to our cells and getting in our cells and start replica replicating. So it does that by S proteins, which are glycoproteins that anchor onto receptors on our cells, okay? Uh, for this particular virus, it utilizes the ACE2 receptor, which for a lot of um, medical students, we know this particular receptor. And then so we're starting to think which individuals may have more of these receptors displayed on their cells because they're taking a certain medicine that actually blocks the target to those receptors so they have a regulation on their cells. Could that, could that lead to increased susceptibility? These individuals are people with uh, cardiopathies or hypertension, right? Okay, that's a little bit too out there, but anyway, so it's a well-known receptor. So we know, at least we know a lot about the receptor and how it works, what its target is, and this virus attacks a particular receptor, right? So what it does, it gets in there, it gets onto that receptor, uses that S structural protein, and it anchors in, and, and then goes in your cell, it starts to be cleaved, by various proteolytic enzymes, then it starts its viral replication and it uh, exhibits uh, tissue tropism. It <laughs> exhibits tissue tropism for the, excuse me, oh, whew, for the respiratory, upper respiratory tract cells. Okay, that's why it is a disease that affects our lungs, but it's entering, this mechanism is going through here, these two holes, okay? So now that we kind of explain what the virus is and how it works, um, let's talk about why it's important for us to heat up our sinuses. So it turns out that this particular virus is highly susceptible to heat in this study, they saw that the virus was able to live up to two weeks after drying in a cold, dry environment. That is environments with low temperature and low humidity, right? Uh, they saw that there was a decrease in viability at higher temperatures starting at 38 degrees Celsius and uh, temperatures with higher humidity. Uh, they also saw that um, the virus was able to live in a liquid environment up to three weeks, but was easily killed. Three weeks at room temperature, I'm sorry, but was easily killed if the t if it was uh, 
heat it to 56 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. That is really not very hot because water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So 56 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes killed the SARS-1 virus. Okay, so this is SARS-2. We're just deducing here. Stay with me. Okay, um, so uh, they purport that better stability of SARS coronavirus at low temperature and low humidity environments may facilitate its transmission, especially in, in communities in the subtropical areas such as Hong Kong uh, during spring and air-conditioned environments. Countries with higher temperatures and humidity did not have large community outbreaks of SARS. So tropical regions where it's hot and where the weather is moist because they have a lot of water around them and rainfall. Didn't see as much of a outbreak in the SARS-1 virus back then when it was that outbreak. Uh, countries like Malaysia. Uh, um, another, so, so this is like, uh, really important in terms of like manipulating how this virus actually works so as i said it's coming in through here it's coming in through our nears so what can we do to our environment in order to create conditions that are not favorable to the viabil the viability of this virus yeah Make sure that your hair is warmer on the inside, that it is not dry. And that's another tip. We're not gonna get to that yet. I'll touch on that. Uh, that it is not dry. That uh, in order for us to actively fight an infection, to not only disinfect our nares, make, to make sure that the cells that are in our nares are coated or treated, pre-treated with some sort of viricidal like oregano or GSC, whether you're using grapefruit seed or grape seed. And also heating that area up because it doesn't, it doesn't do too well in, in, in heat. Of course, we can't get it up to the 56 degrees because then that would just be really like, you know, kind of like boiling our nose. But if you use a steamer for a couple minutes, you could get pretty close. The steam is what, 100 degrees Celsius. So if we're breathing that in for at least 15 minutes, hmm, probably we'll get very close, okay? Right. So that's my first recommendation is to steam, to disinfect and steam your nares. Which then brings me to my second recommendation, which is to utilize a humidifier. It makes sense, okay? Heat your home, don't keep it cool. We're in winter, we're using the heat anyways. If you're in control of your heat, turn it up. I'm not saying to now fry the kids and everybody in the house. I'm just saying keep it a little bit warmer than you used to keeping it because I know some people kind of like to layer up in the winter and keep their heat down. That's not a good time to be doing this right now. Turn that heat up and not only turn the heat up, but increase the moisture of the ear by utilizing a warm mist humidifier. Don't use the cold mist one because then that's not doing anything to disarm this virus. So we're looking at how the weaknesses in this thing and we're trying to create environments that will um, cause it to not want to stay around us. And being warmer and having moisture in the air is one of them, okay? So we're going through the method behind my madness, okay, of my protocol. And number two, again, would be disarming right this army because we are creating a the atmosphere in which it, it doesn't want to stay or is not as okay so this category here 
it is twofold. It falls under boosting the immune system as well as disinfecting. And that is the recommendation of utilizing sovereign silver bioactive silver hydrosol for immune support in 10 parts per million the two ounce uh bottled vertical spray in your nose and why why silver you know besides the empirical data that we have about silver and its uh powerful antimicrobial properties it, it's long known to be a a powerful disinfectant for centuries right and we know that silver is an extremely toxic toxic element to microorganisms so microorganisms do not like silver so of course if you are lining the cells that this virus first has contact with with something it hates and it's a highly toxic to, it will decrease the likelihood that that virus will actually be viable in your nears, right? Yeah, so I guess it's a form of disarming the virus and because of its powerful antimicrobial effects also a means of disinfecting, right? Um, so in a, a study entitled Antiviral Properties of Silver Nanoparticles on a Magnetic Hybrid Colloid uh, showed that colloidal silver has excellent antiviral capabilities against several uh, viruses including noroviruses and a lot of quite a bit of uh, a bacteria. So it's a powerful broad spectrum um, antimicrobial that I highly recommend. Now there is a lot of um, quackery out there in regards to colloidal silver. Some people thinking that it doesn't work when it's ingested. They can't see how that the silver particles are um, being introduced uh, throughout your entire body uh, if you ingest it. But here I'm not talking about ingestion. I don't have enough information about the efficacy of uh, silver as an antimicrobial when ingested. I am speaking about coating the cells of your nares and sinuses with nano silver particles. We have enough data out there to demonstrate that it's actually extremely toxic to microorganisms. Okay, now if you want to go ahead and supplement with a, a colloidal silver um, that you take uh, by mouth, then it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's all I can say. It's not going to, if anything, it's, it's going to help. You know, it's not going to hurt. So, hey, do you. Okay. Now, let me review probably the most important, but the most overlooked category and method in fighting this virus. And that is through cleaning, disinfecting the ear. I mean, it just is beyond me when I hear all of these experts on the news talking about the quarantine and not being able to understand why is it that they're seeing so many cases and the curve not flattening and they're doing all sorts of epidemiological um, um, things, fancy things to help combat the virus. But ain't nobody talking about cleaning the ear. Oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> As we mentioned earlier that from the learning from the last SARS virus that we know that most of the transmission is through respiratory droplets, now fomites, which are things like this, pens, things that people touch a lot, forks, utensils, 
that also ha contributes to the virus being spread because as I told you from that study, they saw that it, it lasted up to two weeks in cold temperatures like this we're having now that it loves on surfaces. So, hey, that's where hand washing, wiping all the devices and stuff like that comes comes into play. So I'm not negating the need to disinfect, but I, I feel as though if we're supposed to see that curve flattening out, because we hear everybody talking about that curve, we have to engage in aggressive methods of cleaning the ear. And it's funny because I saw this video, I believe it was on Instagram or on the internet somewhere, about the various methods that China has utilized to completely halt their, their cases. And it is it seems excessive, but obviously it was very necessary and that's something that we are not doing right now. So no wonder those cases are going up. I mean, I saw those people in China out in their hazmat suits, tons of them, like with uh, disinfecting solutions, just spraying everything, even the trees being sprayed. I mean, they got some specialized drones that they hook up with like a big bucket of, of water that drone takes off, start spraying the whole here. Uh, they have these big, dumpster trucks they look like the trucks that like roll the cement but they have like a thing coming out the side where it's just going down the highway just spraying so they have utilized with great results uh, um aggressive ear disinfection uh protocol in china which we just seem to it just seems to be going over over our heads yeah but <laughs> anyways i have i have uh four different categories here that i want to go over with you of ways in which you at home can help to disinfect your ear and it's so funny as we're talking about this at, on social media I swear every day there is a report of someone coming back saying that they've tested positive for the virus even though they have been home. They have not gone anywhere. They were quarantined. They have stayed home, done everything that they were told to do. They're still getting positive tests. I wonder why. Anyways. Uh, as I said, as a fancy scientist, everything I talk about is peer reviewed. <laughs> yeah, you know, I kind of have to back this stuff up because when you're coming out with information like this, especially because I don't really have like a big old thing behind my name, like a PhD or MD, just as yet it's in the process, you know, you kind of have to back yourself up, which everybody should back to yourself up anyways, you know? I mean, you want to make sure information you're providing out there is factual and not, as they like to call it, quackery. <laughs> okay, so from this uh, article here that I found on, is it M uh, NCIB? that little fancy journal place. Anyways, well, as I said, everything will be linked. My sources. Learning from SARS. Actually, I just put the sources. I won't do the whole format of the APA, no. Learning from uh, SARS, and this was SARS-1, okay? Preparing for the next disease outbreak is a workshop summary. Uh, so I guess they're saying preparing for now because this is our stew. Yeah, and I haven't really learned anything from, from that. But uh, anyways, uh, the first the first means and method of uh, cleaning your ear is utilizing a high efficiency particulate ear filter, what we call 
HEPA filter. It's just a fancy name. And it is the best available control technology for ear cleaning at 99.9% .9 with the acceptable industry rate at 99.97% at 0.1 micron efficacy level, right? And um, it's just basically saying that it filters with an accuracy of up to 99%, but they also accept 99.99%, 99 but they also accept 99.97% of uh, particles that are as small as 0.1 micron aerosolized droplets are uh, viral particles that have clumped together to be large enough to be transported in the ear they're considered to be up to five microns so if your uh, purifier is able to purify uh, as little as 0.1 microns, I'm pretty sure that it should be able to uh, adequately filter the uh, 0.5 microns, right? But then you have respiratory droplets that are much larger than aerosolized droplets and those, your, your purifier can't help you. So that's where I guess the social distance come into play because I don't want you to sneeze and then a big old blob of whatever it is you sneezed out falls on my mucous membrane or somewhere and then makes me infected or you know a source of infection for others as well so uh, that's why I uh, recommend using a HEPA filter also, uh, ultraviolet dermicidal irradiation. It's just a fancy name for utilizing a UV light to disinfect surfaces. And it does that by uh, using a radi uh, radiate. <laughs> it does that by utilizing 2,250 to 3,020 angstroms, uh, which is just basically a uh, wavelength here, and it irradiates, irradiates your surfaces, and in doing so also irradiates microorganisms and kill them. And it can be used for both air and surface disinfection and sterilization. Ultraviolet dermicidal irradiation uh, um, was first used in the 1900s, early 1900s, 1901, to actually treat water at water plants. And then later on in the 1920s and 1930s, it demonstrated the uh, utilization of air purification in hospitals as well as schools during a measles outbreak so uv light is no stranger to air purification so that then leads me to my tip about utilizing an air purifier that filters the air through uv light i recommend the therapure brand I'm not affiliated with any brand of anything that I mentioned here. I just so happen to have those products and I like them. I'm pretty sure you could find other brands out there that may even have uh, better features. For, for instance, um, the HEPA filters that have charcoal and pre-filters along with UV lights are the highest approved in their category. Now. Let us move on to my favorite, really. I swear by this. Now this is another one where there are a lot of people talking a lot of stuff about ozone. A lot of fear-based things going on out there about ozone. Do your own research, okay? And 
I'm ta you're talking to someone that has actually utilized the the product for years and the device for years without any incidents. It's just of a concern in if you purchase the wrong device, okay? Because ozone, as I always say, if you inhale too much of it, it can irritate your lungs. And that's the last thing we wanna do to cause any sort of mic microvascular damage while you know trying to protect this organ from being infected. You know, that does, that's counterintuitive, but it works incredibly. If you buy the right device, make sure that your device uh, functions by EPA standards, okay? And that is purchasing a unit that has functionality to release ozone in the air, and mine does, okay? Um, so what is ozone? Ozone is an allotrophic form of oxygen. This is a fancy name to say that it is an extra oxygen, so it's O3 instead of O2. And um, basically what that does is that it allows a lot of various oxidative and reductive reactions that microorganisms like viruses don't like. And because it is in the form of a gas, it's able to be dispersed throughout our ear as a form of a gaseous antimicrobial, which is exactly what we need right now. So um, I highly recommend it, I, I tell you. Whenever I, I so I, I constantly have my, my, my ozone machine on. I don't sleep with it. Sometimes I do. My machine goes in intervals. I have different modes. So I can set it uh, to be released every 20 minutes, every five minutes, every three minutes. Okay. And it gives the right amount. Uh, it releases the right amount of ozone. So I'm not breathing in too much. Um, and I tell you, if I should ever feel like I'm coming down with anything, like if I should start having an itchy throat or so, and I go in and I and I in my house and I start inhaling that ozone, in no time that itchy throat clears up. Like I'm like itchy throat where. It's also like it helps like make the place fresh. I have a doggy. And sometimes, you know, they can make yourself stinky. And I <laughs> tell you, that's that. then I turned that ears, that ozone on, it just cleans the ear. It's a powerful ear cleaner. Everything smells fresh and clean because people don't understand that a lot of microorganisms, organisms are airborne and they live in the ear. And even though we can't see them, they have sense to them and they make stuff stinky too. Not only do they go on surfaces, but they also may emit like um, fumes and weird stuff that ozone completely gets rid of. So I highly recommend ozone. If you can't do anything else on my protocol, do the ozone. I, listen, there's no way that hospitals shouldn't be utilizing this in some way, shape, or form. I, I, I really don't know. And the hospitals and nursing homes, places where people are congregated and gathered. That leads me to my other tip of uh, purchasing and utilizing an ozone generator, specifically the design for atmospheric release, recommended concentrations. And I said you could get a lot of brands online for very inexpensive, under $60. I've even seen quite a few of them at. Okay. Also, um, increasing the airflow. I guess that's where um, your HEPA filter will go through because one of the, the great things about HEPA filter is that like it kind of like stirs up the ear. So it doesn't have stagnant ear. So you want that ear moving. I would tell tell you to um, uh, try to get one of those like fans that like are actually fans, but they're heater fans. You don't want to use a cool fan. You want to stay away from making anywhere cool. 
and just kind of get, any way you can to just get that ear moving so that like you don't have stagnant ear of course if you have forced ear coming out of your vents that's also another way another great um way to keep the ear moving but also again with like people who have forced ear vents and all that stuff this is a great time to make sure that your stuff is clean change those filters and all of that stuff okay so we're down into the meat and potatoes of stuff i hope you're enjoying this as much as i am i am really enjoying giving this information out because i'm pretty i know my the stuff listen i just know i just know i always tell abby mommy always knows yeah we're gonna walk soon after mommy's done all right so let's do our, our our final category here is one of the most important categories which is strengthening the immune system because my my policy is offensive like you know i want to fight i want to fight in such a way that like that thing does not come to my door excuse me I want to fight in such a way that that thing does not come to my door. If it does, then I will be so ready to fight it. Or it will be like, oh, damn, like, you know, you've done your preparation and your work. I can't mess with you. Please ignore my earrings. I don't know, like, I have, like, these <laughs> holes in my ears. <laughs> that just, yeah. Please ignore my earrings, like, yeah. Please keep turning. Anyways, um, <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about here is the blood electrification. And that is a tip in which I said utilize a blood electrifying machine two to three times daily must stay hydrated while doing this. I recommend Soda Instruments BioTuner. And it is $320, but it's worth it because it also makes colloidal silver. Okay? If you're somebody who wants to drink colloidal silver, that's a good deal in the long term, long run. But basically, what is this blood electrification? What is method and means to and mode of my madness for putting this on here? Well, this is based on um, another great renowned doctor, uh, Dr. Robert Beck's protocol for fighting disease and inflammation. Uh, he is a late Dr. Beck. He actually passed away. And um, I guess through his own struggles with health, he, he just kind of in his latter times um, developed this amazing protocol, which today has been helping a lot of people. You probably, if you're a health nut or if you're in the health field and like integrative uh, uh, holistic um modalities then you probably know of dr uh, robert beck and his protocol which has actually four parts which includes micropulsing uh which is the, the part that i want to talk to you about today uh pulsed electromagnetic fields which is something i use on a daily basis from his protocol or pmf pemf i'm sorry ionic colloidal silver and ozonated water and i love ozonated water oh gosh as i said i'm not in at home right now so i can't get to do what i do but it, that thing is, is amazing it's an acquired taste i think but from when you start doing it there's nothing like ozonated water even abby i give it to him and he loves it um okay and all of these four areas of his, his protocol will actually be beneficial in fighting this virus, actually. But today I want to zoom in on the micropulsing uh, to discuss the effects of pulse ionic currents on blood cells. 
And there are various studies that have looked at um, RBCs as well as white blood cells. Today, I'm going to focus on the effects of white blood cells as we want to um, focus in on strengthening the immune response. So it is shown to activate the state of the immune response alertness of leukocytes, which are white blood cells, which are part of a huge part of our immune system. So this particular study looked at some leukocyte subset, total leukocyte isolates of full blood samples. And uh, they ran a medium strength square wave electric impulse of 100 volts per centimeters field force at five minutes through the samples and they saw that uh, leukocytes expressed uh, increased had increased expression of several immune markers such as CD3, CD4, CD8, CD11A, CD11B which in, in turn strengthened the uh, immune alertness, immune system alertness, which is what we want to do now. Uh, last but not least, my other recommendation here, supplement with N-acetylcysteine, vitamin C, and zinc. Now, um, I don't know why people always run to vitamin C when they're sick. I don't even know why I put it on here, but hey, vitamin C must be really, really doing a, a good job right now with business. Um, but it, it is not, um, it is not like crazy to take vitamin C, but I don't know if people really know why they're taking vitamin C, but, um, let's talk about supporting the immune system with vitamin C and N acetylcysteine which they fall in a uh, group of um, molecules that when we ingest them, they help us uh, reduce free radical damage. All right, and uh, we'll get into a little bit more about that later, but uh, let's talk about NAC and acetylcysteine. It replenishes a powerful antioxidant called glutathione, okay? And um, glutathione uh, reduces with age. As we get older, we have less of it. And um, it helps us reduce what is called reactive oxygen species, okay? And that is where I, I spoke about the free radical damage there because when these reactive oxygen species are um, released, we have free radical damage to cells. Of course, if you have damaged cells, then your immune system is, is probably not in the best care. So NAC is shown to have anti-inflammatory um, effects as well as you're increasing your reactive oxygen species. Vitamin C, is, it kind of does the same thing overall, but it's a different mechanism. It's just that it loves to pick up free radicals. As it's in there, it just it scavenges for free radicals. The effect is, is the same, is that you uh, increase the robustness of your immune system. You kind of shift it fo its focus on dealing with the damages that we're doing to ourselves to kind of focus on uh, damages that may be coming externally you could um you don't have to run out there and uh, chug on a whole bottle of nac or fight over it like toilet paper yeah you can just go to the store and get some allium what is allium alliums are onions leeks garlics but you know what? I actually went to Trader Joe's the other day and they were completely out of garlic. Even the peeled one that they have in the refrigerated section was all gone. I think because people are chewing down on it because like, we just know that when we're sick, garlic is good for us. But now you know why. It's rich in NAC. Okay, now let's back it up to the zinc. So we often skip over zinc 
but zinc is necessary for an important transcription factor that is um, called a zinc finger that regulates several immune system related gene transcription. So if you want a strong immune system, you really want to take a lot of zinc. Not a lot, but you want to supplement with zinc. If you didn't typically take zinc before, when you eat your breakfast in the morning, you take your vitamins, you now want to put a zinc, um, a part of your supplementation. Uh, the lozenges work great. Um, as far as for immune support, uh, the tablet is fine too, but I, I believe like the, log the lozenges is, ah, my lisp, my lisp, the lozenges is, uh, <laughs> They, they actually, uh, I guess they're more fire available uh, for your body. Um, at, for, for shorter term use, you want it to be more fire available. But if you've been somebody who's been just supplementing for years or, or months with zinc tablets, you don't need the lozenges. You probably have enough in your blood already, but the lozenges, <laughs> don't laugh at me, are great uh, when you want like uh, increased bioavailability uh, right away. So, what are my two other um, recommendations? And this one actually falls under behavioral, behavioral modifications. Okay, so I want you to stay super hydrated. I believe I mentioned it before, a part of the blood electrification, when you're using any sort of electricity or, or pulsing your body with anything, you're losing water, put it back in. But besides that, you want to stay hydrated, like hydration, water, we're what, 70 plus percent water. So you don't want your body at this time to be lacking of anything. So that's necessary for it. So obviously we're 70 odd percent water. So, I mean, it's very necessary that we make sure that we maintain that amount. Okay. So you don't want to be dehydrated. As the point is you don't want to take your, the focus off your immune system away from fighting things externally and, uh, being focused on us, stuff that we can fix our own selves without the help of our immune system. That's not what it signed up for to me. Um, yeah, stay super hydrated, okay? Water is necessary for all of, almost all of our um, biochemical reactions in our body. Um, you also want to avoid alcohol. Yeah, uh, or substances that harm or stress the liver. Mm -hmm. Now I know that we are at home and we are taking this opportunity to just have fun at home. One of those ways of like sipping on some goose. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. you know, everything in moderation. If you're somebody who's already dehydrated, alcohol also dehydrates you. So, I mean, if you're trying to keep your immune system in, in, in top shape, top notch shape to fight this virus, you don't want to be dehydrated and like your only source of water is alcohol because granted your liver will not be in a good position to make the various uh, immune mediators that's necessary when the cells call for it. Like when the cells are like, hey, I need this over here. Your liver is be like, dude, I am still on hover and I ain't got no water. No, you don't want that. You don't want that to be the response. You want your liver to be like, oh, I got this. I, I, then I got this. It's already like even pre-made. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to fry your liver too much with uh, chemicals that are known to harm the liver like alcohol. And of course, the part about social distancing as much as you can. I'm alone, uh, so I have to do everything by myself. But if you have a family, put them on a schedule. 
say, mom, you are not the only one who's going to go out there all the time to do grocery shopping. If you have kids over, over 18, if you have a husband, take turns, okay? Utilize those grocery shopping apps um, that deliver to you if you can afford them because they're pretty expensive. I can't. I have to go do my stuff myself. But if you can do that, any any anything you can do to stay away from people at this at this time will be highly beneficial to you. But as I said, get those kids working, okay? Um, the ones that are 18 and older who can drive and go, don't be scared about sending them out there. Send them out there with a mask. So if it's um, Tina's time, Tina will go this week. Mommy will go the second week to get groceries. Daddy the third week, but you don't wanna keep going out there consistently if you don't have to. Um, okay, yes. So I am hoping that uh, this uh, presentation was of uh, great benefit to you. Please share this information. I'm, figuring, I'm being very serious because I do believe without a doubt that if we should uh, do at least two of the things on this list, we will help put a huge dent in this pandemic. But, yeah, Rona's butt. Let's kick Rona's butt, literally. If you can't do anything else, I, I feel like all of them are important. All of them are important, but if you can't, if you can only do one, I would say, as I said, the ozone. Die hard fan of ozone. I've seen how it works for me. Um, yeah, ozone, if you can't do ozone, what's my other recommendation for fighting? I, it's to, I'm like tackling the ear, tackling the ear. So I would say utilize the, the filter, the HEPA filter, and if you could get it with the ozone light. Yep. I mean, the UV light. What am I talking about? I've been talking a long time and rambling too. I got to edit this. <laughs> uh, if you could get it with the UV light. And I went over the science and everything like that. Everything I spoke about in here are peer reviewed uh, articles that are um, on journal sites like NCIB or NICB, that one. You know what I'm talking about so convincing no but seriously it's serious information and um i hope you share this video it's a bit long-winded but i will try to get it down as much as i can and me talking to you about it doesn't really help the situation but anyways with all jokes aside i want you to be safe okay and uh do not be scared because being fearful it doesn't help the situation and um, it freaks everybody out around you too. Just stay calm, collected, and stay, use this time as a time to reflect and as a time to look at really what matters in your life, to look at who's around you, you know? At the end of the day, these are the people when uh, an expletive hits the fan, um, who's going to be your backbone, your support, and cherish them and use this time to cultivate love and to work on things that need to be worked on within yourselves and within relationships and be grateful and help your neighbors and hope for the best and pray. Pray for healing of the earth and of the nation. If my people who are called by my name should turn from their wicked ways and uh, re um, repent, something like that, and call them by name, I will turn from heaven. I will hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. You know the scripture. I know it too. I know it by heart. I don't know. My head's just gone right now. But anyways. I wish you and your family all the best. Stay safe.